before I get started on this video, I wanted to take a moment to talk to you guys. I wanted to apologize about my voice. As you guys can see, I'm in Sturges and I'm ready to pump and I was having a great time with all my friends and family out there. So I wanted to just take this moment to apologize about my voice, which 100% hasn't all the way came back yet. Uh, but this was a great experience. I just wanted to say that. The other thing is you're about to see in this video, I get a little bit obsessed with turning traction control off, which you'll see at the end of the video, it is not possible to turn it off. This is a little bit raw. This is real life thinking. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up all my opinions after this video to kind of tell you what I think about the 2022 BMW bagger. Uh, yeah. So until then, let's go. Let me throw it back to myself and Sturgis back in time and I'll let you guys see the raw footage. Let's go. I mean, it's not hundred percent raw, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. <clears throat> I'm going to throw it out there to please like subscribe, hit the bell, all the good stuff. Um, and then hit the comments below. We will figure out everything. All right. Hey, if you're new, if you're new to my channel, I am riding fish. I do motorcycle content about 99% of the time. One percent of the time, I do whatever, whatever the hell I do. That ain't a stock exhaust, but I do whatever the hell I want to do that I think is cool. Um, so I hope you join me, like, subscribe, uh, share all the good stuff, and please comment below what you think. And uh, yeah, I'm about to jump on one of these BMWs, so let, let's do this go. <laughs> <laughs> This is the transcontinental. They got a bagger, but man, I'm about to take this out. I'm about to show you guys. I haven't even thrown a leg over it yet, and I apologize for my voice. But check out this color. I'm gonna have to ask somebody what it's called. It's like blue and purple. Test ride, their demo day, Sturges 2021, coming at you. Let's ride. Baggers, and you got standards uh, on the other end. I don't know, I think this one works. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do all right on this one. So, this is the, this is their uh, BMW R1800 Bagger. I chose this one because I thought it'd be the closest thing to a Chieftain or a Street Glide. So if you're gonna talk about baggers, we're gonna talk about the baggers that everybody really, you know, represent. But I'm super excited to do this. I may or may not get on this transcontinental. The, the difference between the transcontinental and the bagger, I believe is just the trunk and these lowers. So, all right, but the motor is the same. I should ask about the tune. I actually don't know if the tune is different or not. But I'm gonna say though, I haven't even I haven't even thrown a leg over this yet. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to do this. I'm, and I, you know what? You guys, my subscribers, are the ones that asked me to do this. So I'm ready for it. Let's uh, let's really ride. Let's go. I'm just I'm literally. Yo, 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 fish, your helmet cam is not on. Yeah, hey, switch it on. Recording. So I straight up did a rookie move and my uh, helmet cam wasn't recording, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple things real quick. This button here, that locks your bags. Um, when they're unlocked, you hit it here, pops this up, pull it, you open it, you close it. Super chill, nice and easy. Um, power button right here 
fires up the infotainment center and the ignite and the ignition system you cannot start this even in neutral you cannot start it without the clutch so being in gear you try to start it nothing happens okay so put it in neutral pull in the clutch and you can start it i'm not even going to start it because y'all already don't need to know we talked about cruise control we got hazards we got the horn we got the blinker all the normal stuff is in the normal places right opens the gas tank that side opens the bottom one this has a phone here i don't know i thought it charges the phone it should you have a pocket for my phone charging all right let's get to the right let's go rookie move rookie move i've just been quote unquote re uh recording and not recording i am on the bmw shit what is it <laughs> Um, I think it's the B1800 bagger, baby. This would be equivalent to the Street Glide or the Chieftain. But uh, the thing I've been talking about the most, uh, the thing I've been talking about the most is, is I cannot. <laughs> How do I take traction control off? I got to fight traction control. They told air mode, rock mode, wait, rain mode, roll mode. Rock mode. Do you think rock is sport? I think rock is sport. Oh. Oh. I, I didn't get a rundown on how to do this. Where's the a trigger? Here's a trigger. Wait a second. I got to get traction control off of this bad boy. All right, let's see here. The touch screen. Huh. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about. <laughs> oh, shit. Guys, I just. I epically failed. It was crazy. All right. Let's sync this. They're all thinking I'm honking at them. It's all good. The brakes are really good. I can tell you that. But this motor. Yeah, that dude think it's small too, I could tell. Hey, I will talk later. I was gonna ask his ass about the engine. So when you torque the engine, you feel the motor like really sway the bike. It's just distracting for me. I don't know how to do it. Like, this is the volume. There's a gear indicator here, guys. Um, the part we missed because I'm an idiot. There's a lock button for electric uh, locking bags, electric locking bags. <laughs> hey, I don't like when you torque it. It feels like it's gonna fall over. I don't wonder what this power reserve is. I'm gonna have to ask him. There's a gauge here that says power reserve percentage. So does that mean it's like losing its power? Like it's a onboard dyno? The traction control is going crazy, but how do I turn it off? Seriously though. All right, I'm gonna leave it in rock because I would assume that rock is good. But I don't know where. There has to be a way to turn the traction control on. I mean, you gotta get to the navigation and the stuff. All right, I'm hitting. That was, that was actually a pretty good little pool. Oh, that's my brights. Man, I'm trying to figure this out, guys. Um, yo, here we go. Shit, it's time to rip. It's time to rip, boys. Let's go, boys. I should have led the pack. Y'all know I should have led. Yeah, let's just give them a little space. I, 
I will say that it uh it definitely rips. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna take that all back. Definitely rips is is not the is not the word. <laughs> um, I mean, I had some pretty good pull. I need to figure out this traction control situation. I don't know if it's dumbing it down. I wonder if this is a percentage of my throttle. So, like, right here it thinks I have half throttle, right? So when I go to a wide open it drops to zero so that must be what that is I'm trying to figure this out on the fly I'm getting a lot of buffeting you probably can't even hear me yeah I'm I don't know I'm not sure how I'm feeling right now about this my first impressions are yeah at best and and I can I'm like struggling Let's see, self-canceling, let's see, have it on right. What I'll do is going into this off-ramp, I'm gonna kind of dip the bike just a little. Oh, it did self-cancel. So, a lot of times, bikes self-cancel or a couple of ways. One is uh, time, uh, two is a lean angle, right? They, it recognizes those things. Um, the third thing can be distance traveled. So. Uh, this has something, right? Because I had the right turn blinker on, hadn't went off, I hadn't got a chance to dip yet, and it uh, and it turned off. I just can't figure out what I got to do to get to the traction control. Because I broke it loose, and I think I could tell that it, it's dumbing me down. And every time I kind of roll on it, it uh, like it's it's giving me the traction control like emblem like well not not that time i guess going right so i'm like kind of tripping on the traction control thing how i why i can't figure out like pretty easily the bike's nimble that's for sure it is it is nimble like it feels like i'm gonna hit hit the motor but I got a ton of buffeting. I'm gonna open my visor. We're gonna see what it does voice-wise or wind-wise. Check this. Yeah, that was a good one. So I would definitely need, this is hitting me right in my eyes. Uh, if you don't know me, <laughs> if you don't, if you know me, you know that I'm 5'10", about 230, with about a 32 to 34 inch inseam. And uh, if you don't know me, now you do. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, should I even deal with the radio? Do you guys want to hear the music? I, I'm sure it's really good. I mean, how hard is it to put speakers in a bag? And if they're not good, you can upgrade them. I don't know about BMWs offer upgrades, but there's always upgrades for audio systems. How do I, why isn't this working? Like, is there another trigger or something? There's something, gotta be something. I'm missing something. So this happened very quick without very much walk around. So I'm gonna follow this real ride up with a, um, maybe like a little demo from a person. I'm just tripping right now. I think this is a DIN system, yep. So European, they do DIM system, DIN, I think DIN, something like that. Uh, anyway, it's auxiliary power. Let's try cruise control, set. Oh, it even has a monitor of, oh, does it have a lane too? Oh no, but it does know the people ahead of me. All right, let's see if I can uh, pick up speed. Oh yeah, it lets you increase speed. There we go, guys. So it handles really well. I mean, you get some shake. We got some side wind, but really the fairing's doing a good, doing its job. It's holding. I mean, I got to turn, but it's really solid. No complaints. I'm not sure if it's my trap, my distance behind this guy. Why it won't let me go the speed? There we go. Now it's letting me. Wow. 
what happens if I shift. Ready? Shift. Ah, it stayed on. It's not, it's not, it's not catching it up though. Oh yeah, it is slowly. How much wind noise is there? All right, so to turn it off, a little, a little forward roll of the throttle, and uh, it easily just uh, disengaged cruise control, but it's still on. So I literally could one touch resume. We're back to it. I, I think it, it handles pretty well in the corners. I really am not loving the torque thing. I mean, or the the like engine torque. Whenever, whenever I. Whenever you rev the RPMs, so if you're a blipper, if you are a um, a rev matcher, all of that sort of stuff, yeah, yeah, it's a little uh, different. Um, let's talk about some other things. I have no leg space, none. It's mid controls. I can easily stand up, as you guys can see. Well, not well. You can see kind, I guess. But nice floorboards. Uh, I feel good standing. I don't know why I would have to stand on this bike other than to adjust myself going down the interstate. But but yeah, the brake is still very accessible even standing. I just downshifted no problem. Downshifted again, no problem standing. So maybe this is an adventure bike. You think it could be an adventure bike? Maybe they, like Harley Davidson came out with that Pan America. So then they came out with a bagger, but they really made another adventure bike. Upshifted, standing's fine. So the location of uh, the location of the brake and the shift lever are great. But man, I if if I owned this bike, if if I owned it, I, I will say one thing: I have to stop rev matching. I have to have to stop rev matching, and it's not even close. I just can't figure out traction control. What the hell? Oh, I keep putting it, I don't want to put it in rain. I know rock mode gotta be the road, right? Oh, got it. Oh shit, this little, oh, got it, okay. My vehicle. Service. So this little uh, roller for the volume go tilts in and out. These are trips, tire pressure monitor, so it has TPMS. Uh, it tells you when you get your service done. Okay, well let's back up. Let's see what else we got. Navigation, media, settings. Settings sounds like somewhere where, oh, heating, what is that? Oh yeah, back to the freeway again. Let's do this. Good. Sorry, guys. Oh, they have heated seat and bars. I wonder if that's standard. That's pretty cool. Dude, I'm kind of tripping. So that's actually kind of a neat little, once you get it, it's, it's not bad. Let's see. So you literally just like bump it with your thumb like it was a toggle switch, but you could use your pointer finger, whatever you want. Oh yeah, fifth gear. Let's see what six gear, six gear, um, 85, 3,000 RPMs. That's pretty low. That's pretty. That's pretty good. I think that's about 500 RPMs less than my Indian, my 2020 Indian Challenger. I'm gonna ask them a couple questions. I'm gonna ask them: Is the tuning the same across the board? Do they all have the same horsepower and torque? Geary. The reason why I want to ask that makes a difference is the bike that I'm riding right now, uh, it can only get heavier, right? So if I was on the Transcontinental 
and I had it was loaded down, if I had the same amount of power, this is what I would have, right? But it'd be worse uh, performance because of the weight. Let me be very clear. That little torque that I'm feeling and I'm talking about and I'm referencing a, a lot, it is not, does not feel like I'm gonna fall over by any means. But it does like wake up the senses for like a quarter second when you're not expecting it. Trip, the fuel consumption, miles per gallon, it's claiming that it's, that's probably its average life over people ripping on it, 37.3 miles per gallon so that would put this somewhere in the six gallon range right i would assume i don't know that to be true i'm gonna find out all those little details i'm gonna talk about some stuff of appearance i really like that the way this bike looks i think the dash is very clean the windshield is very clean i mean it's it's a slick looking bike the motor is different, but it's cool. Like if you look up ahead of him, it uh, that's a transcontinental. If you look up ahead of him, the motor doesn't look out of place. You're not sure what it is. If you're a normal V-twin, like an American, you know, cruiser bagger guy, you'd be like, oh, that's a crash bar. That's interesting. Or is that his highway bar? And then you'd roll up and be like, damn. I'm like, damn, that's his motor. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. Um, let's talk about, oh, coming in hot, coming in hot, coming in hot, coming in hot. Uh, the brakes, though, hang on, I'm going to tell you right now, these brakes are bomb. Oh, yeah, these brakes work real good. Oh. Uh, Sturges, guys, like I said before, I, I turned it up. It's been a great time. BMW. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna cut out before I end this, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of differences. I'm not sure how I feel about them. To be just flat out honest, um, I'm not sure how I love. I'm not, I'm not sure how I love the engine uh, torque or rotation or whatever the hell. That's just different. I think I could get used to it. That's not a, a deal breaker by any means. But I mean, it adds just a lot of little thing. I just got to get that traction control off. It's just getting dummy down so bad. But anyway. But, uh. And it feels pretty slow. I mean, relatively, I, I, that's why I think I, I need to track control off. I think it's just getting beat up. Boom. Literally though, this bike is like made to stand up on. It's a, it's, I can stand better on this than my FTR. I'm not lying. That's the truth. The, um, the brakes though, I was going to talk about the brakes, the brakes or I did talk about the brakes, I don't know. The brakes were great, I, I did like them very much. I think the motor um, is a little underpowered, especially in the bagger world, right? So we're gonna compare this to street glides and we're gonna, com and, and, and not like a 107 street glide, this probably like might whoop a 107, I don't know. But uh, it's probably not gonna whoop a 114. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna, it's not gonna whoop a 116. Uh, chieftain I don't I don't think I mean maybe I could be wrong because I'm not really running next to him it's kind of hard you know and I'll say one thing that's always weird about um, when you do these test rides and you're trying to get is that sometimes you get audible like a sensation of speed by sound it's really weird to say that so a lot of people will put like really loud pipes um, and they think they're faster where they're not they could actually be slower right and so because of that that's like a normal thing like that's not like ab abnormal uh that, you know and, and especially in the bagger world people want the sound but it's i would say that it is possible that because this is so quiet and this happens a lot with stock 
because it's so quiet, you get a perception that maybe, so that maybe it's slower. Anyway, that's just a true thing. Something you got to think about. I'm going to ask them about the power. I'm going to ask them about the horsepower, the torque, if they announce that stuff. I'm going to ask them about tuning. I'm going to ask them about traction control capabilities, if that could be taken off. Deuces. <laughs> Kevin over here got on a... Uh, crap, what did I call that earlier? Classic? I don't know what it was. I think it's a classic. Yeah, but we definitely got some questions. We got some questions, people. <laughs> that is for sure. I need to know just a couple things to fill out this video, but this is me writing it. I'm about to check out. We're gonna pop into somebody that could give me some freaking answers, and then I'll just tell you what I think after that. Alrighty, peace. Hey, he's trying to get the money shot off camera, <laughs> off camera. All right, what's your name? Mark. Mark. Fish. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. All right, so Mark's gonna help me out with some of the information that I was talking about in the ride. And uh, we're gonna start with the tuning. Or the, is the, it's the same motor across the platform, right? Yes, it is. Oh, and it's the, the same tune, so like horsepower and torque across the platform? It's the same for now, yes. Well, for now, I mean, we know things get revised all the time. Exactly. So, what is the horsepower and torque? Have they announced that? I, the horsepower I is, uh, it's actually 96. 96. And for the Continental, it's about 91. But the foot, the footers, footers, yeah. The feet is yeah. 116. 116. So you got a lot of torque. Yeah, a lot of torque. the bottom end, yeah. So 116, nine, yeah, that, I mean, like I said in my video, that is actually, that's more than a 107. That is probably right around the 114. Sometimes if they put like high, high performance uh, cams in it, you might get 100 horsepower. That's pretty, pretty common. So you gotta keep in mind, these are all bone stock. So we are putting out a lot of aftermarket parts yeah, and yeah. we're not even like showing that yet. Yeah. So, this is just as is right off the dealership. Okay. Are you guys gonna have different pipes available? Yes. Okay. So we've already partnered up with Vance and Hines, nice. uh, Rolling Sands, and Mustang Seats. So okay. we have aftermarket parts already available. So it's just basically getting in, into the dealership. What about windshields? You do, I see you have a different one on Transcontinental than you do this one. Uh, so you, could that one go on here? That, uh, I'm not too sure of, okay. but it is just, yeah, the lower profiles on the bagger just for more of a sleeker look. Absolutely, and, and it does look sleek. Anything I've said, one thing I've said is I really do like the way it looks. Uh, they, he didn't even know I was filming. I was looking around, yeah. probably more than I should have, but um, it runs really good. Uh, and him and I have been discussing the feeling what do we call that? I don't know what to call that. The I called it like the torque, the shimmy. Or yeah. Yeah, I guess it has a shimmy. I like that. So it has a little shimmy. Um, and I think we can get used to it. I think I can get used to it. It would have to change some of my riding style and my habits that I have. But they're not, I mean, I rev match. That's something I do. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's why when I was set cruise control at 80, even with a crosswind, I told you guys that it was holding perfectly. So no high speed wobble for this bad boy. I don't know, man. Um, that's it for now, I guess. Yeah, dude. I appreciate you guys fish. letting me come out and rip fish. Yeah, here, Absolutely. actually. Watch this. Watch this, guys. Act like I'm ready and shit. Boom! Body fish. Thank you, sir. So, um, so we said 96 and 116. If you want bone numbers, you gotta feel it. You gotta feel it. So that shimmy that we're talking about, I think you should come down and and, and fill it out. You know, and I'll be honest, people are gonna crack these ECUs and they're really gonna open up these motors. These coming from Europe, this is my opinion, I don't know anything to be fact or not, but the EU is no joke, especially when it comes to emissions. And I'm sure that these got way, way more uh, stuff ready to rock. So that's my opinion. I appreciate him. I appreciate Kevin. By the way, you cannot take traction control off of the bagger ones. The ones without a bagger, you can. Debating on taking one out, just to rip on it, just to feel what that motor can do with a loose tire. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that'll be in the next video. You guys, again, I'm sorry for the voice. I've been turning it up. Sturgis 2021 BMW. Hey, what year is it? Is it a 22? 22. Okay, BMW 2022 R18 bagger review for you um 
I didn't 100% love it. I didn't hate it. I felt kind of slow with the bagger world. Um, I think it's a lot of nannies. Uh, the windshield has to be changed. And that's it. That's it. That's all I got. I don't know. That's it. All right. I'm going to end it. You don't know. All right, here we are. I wanted to quick do the little wrap like I told you I was gonna do. There was a few things that didn't make the video because one, I just dropped in last second to do this. Had no idea I was gonna do it other than like, hey, some people said I should do it. So here I am, I'm gonna go do it. So no research involved. Um, the preamp to riding this bike wasn't any matter of fact i just said hey i want to ride the new bmw bagger and they said come with me there wasn't really a lot of walk around or questionnaire or anything it was just get to it and ride which normally i like this time i realized later yeah i kind of had some information like how to toggle through the navigation or the infotainment center using the navigation you know things like the traction control we already seen that that's a whole nother thing we're gonna go ahead and leave that alone i wanted to talk about the price of these bikes these are 24 to 27 thousand dollar motorcycles for the bagger the continental is 27 to 29 thousand if you get that paint job that sweet galaxy dust metallic and i cannot explain to you it's like a chameleon paint that's constantly changing colors. It is beautiful. It's like a $2,400 upgrade. I believe some other stuff comes with it, not just the paint, but I may be mistaken on that. Like, it is a really cool paint job. I, I, would, I would love to have that paint. The gas tank was 6.2 gallons. I missed that one. Um, I think I guesstimated about six with that quick ma mathematician brain that I got. <laughs> Oh, guys, you know, um, I talked about the shimmy a little in the video. I wanted to bring that up a little again. Um, it's something I think I could have gotten used to if I had the bike like a long term ride or if I owned it. I don't think it's necessarily a deal breaker. It just wasn't what I'm used to. So that being said, yeah, I think maybe you could get used to it. I don't know. But there was no leg room. I haven't seen anything about highway pegs. I could be mistaken. I know that they got a whole lot of aftermarket accessories coming for this bike. Some of, some of the features I have not talked about at all is hill assist, reverse assist, and adaptive headlight. I didn't refer to any of those, mainly because I didn't know. I would have loved to try the reverse assist if, if, if I'd have known to tell you guys what that was all about. Um, hill assist. Uh, we all kind of I think have a good understanding of how that works even though I've never really used it so yeah you know I just I think that that's really cool that they offer it I also wanted to talk about a really thing that means a lot is the fit and finish this these bikes are so they're demo bikes people have been riding them all week everything was tight the lids on the saddlebags they were like on they weren't really on rails but it was like they were on rails they were shut how they were supposed to they seemed sealed very well everything was really good so the fit and finish of this bike the looks the overall looks of this bike i thought was really good i've i've mentioned that in the video a few times Alrighty, so to end this i'm gonna actually throw it back to myself and sturges 2021 and uh, yeah. That's it. All right, I'm gonna end it. If you don't know me, I'm riding fish. Subscribe and like and share with your mom. All the good stuff. Till next time, ride hard, ride fast, guys. Somebody, you don't know, peace.